What's up, everybody? My name is Matt from the Alive Company, and today we're going to be talking about the highest paying programming languages that you can learn today. The reason that I'm making this video is because with the advent of AI, learning a new language has become easier now than ever. The reason why I believe this is the case is because you can learn simple syntax, search things up super easily, make simple scripts to help you learn and become a better engineer in that specific language much faster and much better than it was in the past. In the past, you would have to read a ton of documentation in order to actually output something, but now you can kind of build as you learn. So if the AI builds something that you don't really understand, you can go a little bit deeper, write, you know, how does this work? Why is this working the way it is? And you'll get a better answer than if you were to just only learn things from just reading a book, right? Because sometimes you don't even know what's possible until somebody shows you. And AI, while it may not be right 95% of the time, it can at least show you what is possible with the coding languages that you're using. So let's just jump right into it. I also want to say that this video isn't just going to be a list-a-thon where I'm just listing them out. I'm also going to be interjecting a little bit of my personal thoughts on why this is so important to know. Because throughout my time as a biomedical engineer and a software engineer, I didn't really have somebody to hold my hand and tell me, hey, you should learn directly this if you want to make a great career in XYZ. If you didn't know, all of these different industries require different tools and different programming languages to be proficient in or to work in, right? So like banking uses more Java. Consumer technology, probably going to need to know some TypeScript. And then for iOS, I have no idea what you're going to need to know because iOS and apps is just like all the way over there for me. And so why is it so important to think about this question? I talked about it a little bit before, but I'm here to help you make the highest ROI decisions in your career and just make you a better software engineer. And yes, money is a big reason because guys, if you spend 10 years learning a programming language that is gonna be useless in the next year or the information that you needed to know back then isn't the information you need to know now, then technically you wasted your time in a way, right? So let's say some programming language that was used for iOS in the past is obsolete now that a new programming language was just added that makes it way easier to make apps. This situation means that you just invested a ton of time, a ton of money, a ton of your life basically into learning something that became useless. So we have to figure out programming languages that are high leverage, used in a lot of fields and are high paid because guys, at the end of the day, making money might not seem like an important thing to some people, but to me, it definitely is. And that's how you're gonna get out of a lot of the situations that you're in. So because I don't wanna waste your guys' time, I'm just gonna jump right into it. I think that if you didn't know what this language is, Solidity, that's absolutely fine because I have no idea what it is either. Apparently, it's a language used in blockchain and crypto, and it's probably used for like some sort of trading algorithms or like building those out. I've personally never used it. Personally, I've never heard of it, but that's why this video is so important. Is you have to learn and see what is available and hey, is there a good opportunity here? I want to highlight a couple of things in this list. And this was taken from Dev Job Scanner, which is, I think this just online tool that somebody on Reddit made. So just be sure to take these earnings and learnings with a grain of salt. I want to talk about how there's only 154 jobs for this role, 46 jobs for this role, but for C++ and C, there's over 4K jobs. So listen, if you're going to be learning a programming language, I personally believe it's better to spend more time learning a language that can be applied to a bunch of different roles than to pigeonhole yourself into really highly competitive roles like learning solidity or learning closure, unless that's exactly what you want to do. So for me, again, learning a programming language takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of investment. It's gonna be really difficult for you to just jump back and forth from a bunch of them. I would say pick one, maybe even two, and then just go from there. If you wanna learn solidity, sure, you have the chance of making 178k on average the mean right but i personally believe that if you want to be a little bit safer maybe you should learn a language like c c++ or even python look at the amount of jobs that are available here 4k jobs for c and c++ 3.6k jobs for ruby and then 19k jobs for these languages as well then in the lower tiers you have java c sharp typescript javascript at the end of the day look how many much more opportunity there is for these roles if you add them all together, it's probably about, let's say, I don't know, 100K jobs in these specific roles, whereas there's gonna be a lot of high competition for these specific tools as well. Now, you may say to yourself, hey, 
if there's not much competition here, I can just stand out and like succeed here, which I think, sure, that may be the case. But again, it all depends. Do you want to spend a ton of time learning a language that may not be used in the future, may not be applicable to other fields? Let's say that you get laid off or you can't find a job. There's not many openings for this solidity language. Like what can you do to market yourself to other companies? Not really much, but you know, that's just my own opinion. And so I also want to highlight again, like, okay, what's going to make you the most amount of money? What's going to make you the most successful and the most happy? The pick between these two is going to be kind of up to you. I can't really tell you what the best option is and say like, oh yeah, it's got to be this one every single time. But all I can say is that, hey, data structures and algorithms, learning Python will get you into big tech. Big tech does not really care about projects all that much from what I've seen. Sure, if you have some sort of project that's absolutely cracked, you create a startup, something like that, where you're really setting yourself apart um, and you did this like during school, sure, that's something that's nice to have. But if you can't perform in a leak code style uh, interview process, if you can't figure out how to communicate with somebody through code, which I think Python is honestly the best for, then you're going to be bottlenecked. And that's a situation that a lot of people I know are in. It's like, hey, you understand how to use other languages. You understand how to use like SQL or something like that. But you aren't good enough at Python yet to write, you know, or finish mediums on leak code you probably aren't going to meet the bar for getting hired at these big tech companies. And so my advice is, hey, if you're in school, you should probably start looking at languages that are going to be high leverage like Python. Spend less time building projects out and spend more time just getting your skills at DSA as best as they can possibly be. Because the standardized way to test somebody for their skills at programming is through data structures and algorithms. We see that changing a little bit with Meta now using AI for some of their interviews. But in reality, I don't think we're really that close to having AI being the standard for all coding interviews. I'm certain it's going to take a really long time to adopt. Getting this out of the way, understanding data structures early as possible is definitely one of the best things you can do for your career. And so you may say to yourself, like, hey, how do I get better at data structures and algorithms? The really simple answer is just doing leak code Every single day or for a period of time, if you do like maybe even 20, you would be really good off. Uh, but it's it's harder than it looks, right? You may say to yourself, oh, I don't have the time for that. I can't do that. I work a full-time job. But trust me, a lot of people are doing this grind. And a lot of people are going to become more successful than you if you don't take up this grind. Because it's just a sad reality. Like your earning potential is held back by how well you can do at Leco. And I know it may sound crazy for me to say, like, oh, yeah, but I can network, I can talk to people, I can do things, right? But if you can't perform in the coding interview, then you're not going to get the job. You're going to get rejected. You're going to get laughed at. I mean, not laughed at, but, you know, it's going to be really difficult for you to, once you even get the opportunity, get through your foot through the door. So a thing I want to highlight with leak code and with, like, earning potential and things like that is that with practicing and with doing more things, like, like this is the, with the AI problem as well, you know, doing more problems or writing more prompts does not equal understanding. Let's look at this problem here to some. This is a problem that a lot of people can recognize. It's pretty infamous in terms of like starting leak code. Uh, and honestly, it's not that bad. If you just remember these lines of code and try to understand what they are, that's going to help you out a ton in getting better at leak code. But sadly, just under, just like knowing this and being able to write this out isn't really enough for like you to become uh, exceptional in coding interviews. It's not just knowing the code, it's also being able to perform under pressure and learning how to communicate with somebody during that coding uh, interview. And again, this video was supposed to be about the top 10 highest paying program languages, but it's, a, it's more about leverage, right? What's the highest leverage thing you can do to advance your career? Learning how to do these problems, learning how to excel at lead code, perform under pressure in a coding interview, interview will make you more money than learning some esoteric, uh, you know, whatever blockchain language, in my opinion. Because to me, there's so many more opportunities within just learning this specific skill set. You open the door for a lot more things. You can say to yourself, 
hey, I want to jump to this company. I want to jump to that company. And it's going to work out because, hey, I can perform under pressure and I know how to do leak code. So like no matter what I do, the skill set that I have here is going to apply to everything, right? But also some companies may say like, hey, you may know how to do leak code in, in Python, but this is a C++ role. So learn how to do uh, two sum in C++, which I don't know how to do, but hey, like it probably wouldn't be that hard to actually learn it and get it out if I understand how this works here. And so my point is learn the highest leverage skills as well as the highest leverage language that you possibly can. It's, and for me, it's going to be Python. Python, which this is written in right now, is going to be used in AI. It's going to be used in backend engineering. It's going to be used in a ton of other things. I use Python for like any small thing that I need to make. It's just so readable and it's so like usable for like new people that I personally believe that if you're just starting out, if you're just looking to break into tech today, just start with Python and everything is going to be fine. You'll figure out what other language you can learn and get better at. But if you want a, big, a little bit of a bigger challenge, you're already a computer science student, you already understand more about software engineering and computer science than most average people, I would say stick to C++. Learn a language that is going to give you the access to high paying roles like quant roles or places at like banks or like firms where you know they need the C++ because they need a better control of the actual system. I wanted to conclude by saying that Programming languages aren't really everything, but it is an important thing to consider when you're thinking about the amount of time you're spending to get good at something. To me, it's not really so much the programming language that you know. It's more about what skills do you get from using that programming language and how can you apply it to snowballing into higher leverage offers for your life. So if you get good at C++, hey, you're probably going to get higher paying roles than if you were to just know Python. But maybe you say to yourself, no, Python is better in like the AI industry. So that's where I'm going to be. Maybe that's going to work out for you. It really just depends. And I know that sounds like wishy-washy for me to say, but I'm not an expert. I don't know what the future is going to be. All I know is that, hey, if you learn this one language, you're going to have a better chance on passing lead code interviews, lead code style interviews. So give it a shot. Learn Python, get better at lead code, maybe spend some time learning C++ and then do those leak code C++ problems for quant firms and make salaries of you know $400,000 easy. Because at the end of the day, uh, we're all here to be successful. I want you guys to succeed. I want every software engineer to have the opportunity to make this sort of money and really change their lives. You see people online who do this, Coding Jesus, the guy who worked at Netflix, Primagen, Frank New. These people like just basically started from nothing and figured out how to leverage learning a language into making it their entire career. And they used content as well, which is something that I'm trying to do too. So if you want to get better at lead code, I recommend you got to make a schedule. You got to say to yourself, um, you know, hey, I'm going to do this many lead code problems, this many days, X days of the week, you know, three times a week. You know, I'll offset them. I'll do more on Saturdays. I'll do more of this. And uh, if you're interested, actually, I'm going to be doing a challenge for the next month to see how many leak code problems I can do in one month. Um, it's going to be really difficult and I'm going to see how far I can get. But like, that's the only way that you get better at leak code. You just do more problems. You try your hardest and you just learn. Because again, it's not really about the language specifically that you know. It's just being able to leverage a high ROI skill, which, you know, maybe Python, maybe C++ or anything into a thing that's going to give you more opportunities. If you want to go ahead, learn uh, Solaris, whatever that programming language is, for me, I'm going to be sticking to my Python, I'm going to be sticking to my C++, and I'm going to be sticking to my uh, leak code problems to just get better, find the best opportunity that I can and just keep improving. If you like what you saw, my name is Math in the Alive Company. I hope you learned something. And thank you for watching. Peace.